Hello fellow Azarians, thank you for joining me today. I wanted to talk to you about deadheading and pruning. Uh, we've talked about fertilization and you know that after you fertilize, four to six weeks later, it's time to get your first blooms and we're thinking about when do I deadhead these blooms. You're going to look at the blooms and say, do they bring me joy? Is this something that I want to take a picture of and share with all of my friends? If the answer is no, um, then it's time to go ahead and take it off. And usually a bloom that has expired is, uh, the leaves are already starting to fall off anyways. So what I do is I grab the bloom by the head and just snap it off. Um, I'm snapping it off just so it's just the bloom and no more. And I'm trying to keep as much of the petals in my hand as I can so that they're not falling into the bed. I'm going to go ahead and drop that into my garden bin. So sometimes I just want you to be aware of I've got sleepy bees that are underneath the petals. And so they're not really happy with me when I snap it off. So I do take a quick look underneath the rose itself um, to see if there's a bee before I snap it. In the event that that kind of scares you and you want to use your printers, you're going to just take your little snippers here and you're going to take it off just at the bottom and look at that little beauty i've got a japanese beetle here on my on my bud i'm going to drop him in some sippy water but you just snap off the bottom of the uh the bud here i would sanitize after each shrub uh in the event that the area that you're um, snipping on the rose looks like it has any kind of fungus you're going to want to sanitize after each snip but if it's all a healthy shrub you can keep on going from shrub to shrub but sanitize your pruners in between each shrub just to ensure that you're not spreading anything so after i have deadheaded and we're going to go around every day i go around twice a day in the morning and at night because blooms change so much and i'm going to deadhead so the other thing that i do i want to make sure that i'm cleaning the bed if you don't have a blower, you're going to go ahead and make sure that you're raking out underneath the rose itself to get out any dropped leaves or petals. If the petals have thrips or another bugs, spider mites, they're going to move from those dropped petals and leaves back up the shrub. So you would just want to try to keep everything as clean as possible. For me, the easiest thing that I found is a leaf blower. I use the leaf blower not only on the beds, to push the drop leaves and petals out but then also on the rose itself and any of those leaves that are getting ready to drop and they're kind of turning yellow the leaf blower will take care of that for me so just an easy tip to try to consider i want to show you now a rose bush that has is completely finished its flush there's no more deadheading to do and it's time to think about that um, cutting it back after a flush so let me show you that rose this is one of the front raised beds and i'll show you a picture of what it looked like from the other end just a few days ago so you can see that this entire bed was in full bloom and if you think about now that I clipped these down for the spring prune and they were probably two feet off the ground or so so two feet to where we are now I'm five foot six and they're my height so these roses grew approximately three feet in six weeks so probably that great big roses so now when we look at this we want to bring down the height and I hope that you can see the canes here in front of me we want to bring down this height back down to waist level because once it gets its next fertilizer treatment it's going to shoot up again another three feet and I don't want these towering above me so you're going to do the same thing whether a rose is in a pot or in the ground so I brought out my bone-eyed sealer because as soon as we cut these, it's going to have that nice, white, fresh growth, and cane borers are going to be attracted to that, so we're going to want to seal those. So I have my sanitized pruners. I'm going to bring this down to my, um, my waist, and where I'm cutting it is right above a leaf node. So let me bring this closer for you to see. If I were cutting here, um, and this was still on the cane where I just cut, I would be cutting here. Do I care about keeping it at an angle? No, just use whatever uh, is comfortable for your hands. And why do I say that? Because I'm planning on using pruning sealer. And a lot of times people will say, if you don't cut it at an angle, as soon as it rains, that rain is going to sit on the cane and it is going to rot it. I've never seen that in my life. That's not to say that it 
doesn't happen, but it hasn't happened to me. So just make sure you're using your uh, sealer and you will be fine. Don't worry about the angle of the cut. All right, so I'm going to now look at everything on the shrub really quickly. I'm going to make sure that I drop those canes into my bin, or if you're on the Facebook propagation page for Rose Geeks, if it's out of patent, you want to share with your friends or share with the vendors so that they can keep these babies in circulation. So after I bring the entire shrub down now, I've got eight canes here that might be kind of difficult to see, but after I bring everything down ruthlessly to the same height, then I'm going to start looking at the overall shape of the rose. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off also. Um, I'm looking at the overall shape of the rose, and if we consider any canes that are um, on the outer edge, we want to bring those in, and we want to be looking for something that's kind of like this shape um, for the rose. So the uh, center ones are going to be a little bit taller with the uh, outer ones being a little bit shorter to give us that rounded shape. So now I'm going to go ahead and make sure I get all of these canes that I just cut sealed so that no bores are going to go in there. What happens if a bore goes down into the rose? It will keep on boring, boring, boring all the way down to the crown and that cane will eventually die. They could eventually kill the entire rose. So that's something that's important uh, that we want to do. So I'm turning the camera now. If we look down this entire hedge, I've left one down there in the sun for you to see. You want to keep your hedge at about the same height. So now if we look at this entire hedge, this rose is about coming to here. So I want to bring, this is Benjamin Britton, I want to bring him down um, a lot, especially up here. So I'm going to not even give it a thought, just be looking for right above a leaf node not caring about the angle but really quickly just go ahead and pull down the entire shrub because I know that with my great big roses fertilizer this baby is going to shoot up several feet over the next four weeks or so and it'll be ready for its next flush. So this just helps you to maintain the height of the rose so that they're at eye level and you get to enjoy the scent of them and they just don't become so unwieldy. So very quickly, I'm taking down the height and then I'm going to look at the shape to make sure that I like the shape of it. This one is an outer cane, so it can go down even a little bit lower than I'm keeping the center. So there you go. An easy way to manage the height of your roses and get ready for your next flush. So I've got a couple hundred more roses to go through, bring down the height, defoliate, seal and prune, and then get that fertilizer in so that they can take off for the next flush. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.